We at Typewriter Minutes have been thinking about groovy things from the 1960s. Avocado green appliances. Easy Rider was groovy. Simon and Garfunkel were feeling groovy. Frank Bullet was groovy. The Yellow Submarine is kind of groovy. And how about Orange Shag Carpet? Are there any other things from the 1960s that are groovy? This is Eli from Typewriter Minutes. Today we're doing a review of a 1966 Montgomery Ward Signature 300 in this groovy avocado green color. This is a machine we picked up from Goodwill. It's a re rebranded brother, JP1. And it's in really good cosmetic shape. It's got a few scuffs here. A few on the back, not much. A few scuffs right there. It was filthy inside and out when we got it. But I gave it a full chemical clean. A few more scuffs right there. Um, other than a few nicks, it's in really good shape. And uh, we're happy with the deal that we got for it, again, from Goodwill. Another reason we're doing a review is because this comes with a kind of a little snazzy case that we like. We'll show that to you in a few minutes. Now for a tour of the keyboard. It has a standard QWERTY keyboard. It does not have a tabulator. And no. It, yep, no tabulator buttons. And it does have a one and exclamation mark button. There's the touch control for lighter and heavier typing, and the ribbon color selector. So just kind of a basic model. No tabulator, but everything else you would expect on a little tiny portable typewriter. We'll switch the camera here in a second. We'll take a look under the hood. Real quick before we go into the hood, the touch control on these actually makes a difference. On a lot of machines, I can't really tell a difference. But on these little brothers, I can feel a significant difference between the light setting where it's easier to push and the heavy touch where it really wants to fight back and give you more snap back. So that makes a difference on this machine. My executive assistant will now show you under the hood. So the ribbon cover just pops right up. There's two little posts, one there, one there and they fit into these little rubber uh, grommets. Sometimes these are as hard as rock or uh, missing. This one actually, uh, both of them are actually still soft and don't need to be replaced, which is kind of nice. And it's a carriage shift machine, but it's still pretty light on the pinkies even though it's carriage shifted. It does have automatic ribbon reversal system the eyelet, you have to have eyelets on the ribbons and then they come out and trigger this fork on that side or that side. And if you want to manually reverse the ribbon, you just have to go doink or doink. And that's about it for under the hood. When I got it, the uh, paper bale and this little eraser table were bent. So I had to do a little bit of work to get those straight, but now those are in good shape, and we'll uh, come over to the side of the machine. My assistant will now put the ribbon cover back on. So it just pops right in. All right, let's go around and see what's on this side of the machine. Eli, take it away. So we have the flatten knob, the carriage release lever, which we only have on the right side, not the left. It's common for little ultra portables. The carriage lock. That's for putting it in the case and transporting it. What do we have back here? The paper release lever, which is for if you put your paper in crooked, you just flip this and you can adjust it so that it's straight. The switchblade paper support, doink. That's kind of cool. Sliding tabs. Margins. Sliding left and right margins. And a cool logo. Okay, let's come over to the, oh, there's a few scuffs there. 
All right, we'll come over to this side. Pardon the sun, we're getting a morning sun. Let's see, this is the line spacing. So you have single, one and a half, and double spacing. And then R is for releasing the platen. So that way you don't have uh, clicks and you can move it exactly where you need to on a form. And then when you're done, just put it back to your line spacing. This handle, um, pass the camera back off, does go up and down and you have to be careful when you're putting it in the case because when it's down here this can scuff the ribbon cover or chip it chip the paint and you see that a lot of times so get a little bubble wrap to keep on there when you're putting it in the case that way you keep the ribbon cover in good shape and then finally i'll tip it up and look at the bottom i did put on some new rubber feet it had gray cracking uh, feet and I have nice new rubbery black ones they're nice and grippy and then just very minor scuffs on the bottom of the machine which you would expect for the bottom and now my assistant will do the type test all right paper support up and before we get started one of the reasons I like brothers is that at least on everyone that I've had so far the platen and the feed rollers are still nice and soft. These were dirty, so when I had this thing taken apart to clean it, I did clean the platen and the feed rollers, but they're still soft and you don't have to worry about getting them recovered, which can cost you know 60 to 100 dollars. So anyway, back to the type test. red setting this time. Something on these smaller, smaller ultra portable typewriters to note is that the carriage is lightweight, and because of that, you have to give the line return lever a little bit of extra oomph in order to get the lines to advance. So you can either give it a, a good, good, solid bump at the beginning, or if you go slowly, it'll wait till the end, and then the line will advance. I kind of like to give it a nice shove to start with. Okay, and now on the black setting. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. Oops. A little typo there. clear imprint that was a that was a typo not a skipping the brothers I've never had one that skipped I have a royal a couple royal quiet deluxes that have a tendency to skip if your typing action isn't perfect but brothers are pretty solid and I don't have that issue all right I'll pass the camera back off and do a quick alignment test in a line. Two other quick notes about the keyboard. If the type bars get jammed when you're typing, you can either flick them back with your finger or 
use the margin release key and it's a dejammer key, which is kind of handy. The other thing, when I put this thing back together after cleaning it, I noticed that the space bar was really loud. It was a clacka, clacka, clacka instead of a thumpa, thumpa, thumpa. And that's because underneath here, there's two spots where there's supposed to be rubber bumpers um, that makes it keep the space bar linkages from hitting the metal bottom. And those were gone, so I'll show you what I got to replace them with. So I went to the auto parts store, got some tubing of different sizes. I've been needing to get some anyway for uh, feed rollers and whatnot. And this little yellow tube fit just perfect. I cut off a piece and put one on each of the two places under the space bar where it goes. And now I have a nice thumpa 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 instead of a clacka clacka clacka. Now let's take a look at the case. A lot of times in the newer ones, you'll see the hard shell plastic case. So the newer brothers, they went to the plastic shell machines underneath and this just covers it. And in the older ones, you have the blue leatherette. So we've seen those a lot with the Webster's, different brands of Webster's. I think I've seen um, a tan case also for some of the other Brother rebrands. We don't have one of those in the house yet. But here's the green one that came from Goodwill with this little green machine. I kind of like the looks of it because it has little chrome pieces here and then chrome up here and here. It's just a, I don't know if it's thin wood or what it is. Not a super substantial case, but it's just kind of snazzy looking. I like it. You open it, you go doink, doink, and then those lift, that lifts up like that. These little rubber bumpers were off when we got it from Goodwill, so I glued those back on. There's no, there's nothing really holding it. Like sometimes you'll see recesses in a case for the feet. Uh, this just, typewriter just sits on there, and then this comes down on top of it. And then that rubber bumper is for when it's, when the machine's on its back, it rests on the rubber here. So the case is in good shape inside and out. It's got a little bit of, uh, of the inside fabric coming up there and a little bit there. Might try to glue that back down. And there's a little bit of scuffing there. Otherwise, uh, the case is in nice shape latches securely. I'll switch the camera back off when you close it. Uh, like that and that. So kind of spiffy. I like the case on this one. We'll wrap up this review with some pros and cons. The pros are Brother reliability and durability, the cool avocado green color, it's light enough to take on the road, the snazzy case, the switchblade paper support, doink. The platinum feed rollers are like new, it's easy to take apart and clean, and the new rubber feet. The only cons we could think of, the return lever takes a little bit of effort. That's common with all little machines like this. It takes some effort to get the line space to advance. It's a little bit loud, but then again, if you're concerned about noise on a typewriter, maybe you should be typing on an iPad. And then it has no tabulator. Those are the only cons that we could think of. Thanks for joining us on Typewriter Minutes. Be sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Doink. Oh, groovy, baby. Yeah.